Chapter 23 I guess I was just too scared to be scared. I know that doesn't make sense, but that's the only way I can describe how I felt. And so, instead of struggling to get free or trying to run away, I wrapped my arms around the old, black, wrinkled arms that hugged me, and I hugged her back as hard as I could. Why you come here, my child? Why you chest heave like wind-filled sail on small ship? I looked over my shoulder at her black eyes, her wrinkled face. You've got to get out of here, I pleaded. They're men coming. They're mean and angry. I don't want them to hurt you. Her smile looked almost soft in the evening light. I know men come, she said softly. Animals tell me. With a wave of her arm, she motioned across the black water to her cabin. I glanced around. The air stopped in my throat. There were crows everywhere. I guess I didn't notice them before because they were so quiet and still. Crows stood on the ridge at the top of her shack. They were as thick as a black feather blanket. I couldn't even see the brown boards. Crows clumped on the lime bushes and bent the limbs low. Crows sat on the cages where she kept her hurt or sick animals. It was like that movie, The Birds, that Daddy had let me watch one night on TV. There were crows every place. The sight made me shiver. With a withered hand, the old woman turned me around to face her. I know men come. Men come before. But why you come here? I was no longer out of breath. The words came tumbling and bouncing out of me like a broken string of pearls scampering down a wooden staircase. I told her all about Jimmy and Barbara and Bubba. I told her about the stealing and how they caught me and got my fingerprints all over stuff they'd stolen and how they'd threatened me and Christine and how they'd made up this story so people would blame her and how they'd beat Jimmy up and told everybody she did it and how I was scared to do anything until I saw the mob of men coming for her. When I finished, I was panting. This time, it wasn't from running. It was from talking so fast. You've got to get out of here, I said once more. You've got to run away. Quick, go hide. The old woman smiled at me and shook her head. No, she said softly. But the whole town's coming. They're gonna. She shook her head again. No, she whispered. Not whole town. Just a few. Few stupid men with hearts that be so full of hate and fear they no have room for nothing else. Most town, okay. I no bother them. They no bother me. Just a few. But you've got to go. If they find you here, if they get a hold of you. No, she repeated. Men like these come before. A tiny gleam of light seemed to catch her left eye. It almost sparkled. They think to find old woman who's scared of them. Find old woman who beg not to hurt her or burn shack. They think find old helpless woman who all alone. But I be ready. She turned toward the bridge. Her old withered hand dropped to my elbow. She tugged. I yanked away. No, I pleaded. There are too many of them. We got to run. We've got to hide. She glared at me, then shook her head. Dare be evil in dis old world, she sighed. Best to stay away from it. Leave alone and hope it not come. But when the evil come to you, you no run away. You fight evil. You make the evil run. No other way. She waved a wrinkled hand at the ridge. Besides, too late to run away. I glanced toward the ridge, expecting to see the glow from men's lanterns. Instead, I saw the bear. It was the big black bear I had run into on the path. He lumbered slowly down the hill. Behind him, another bear, smaller than the first, followed. Evil think men, old woman, alone. Evil men think old woman alone. They be wrong. Old witch of Blackwater Swamp have many friends. She tugged me toward the bridge. I tugged back. But but if Bubba sees me, what about Christine? They've threatened to hurt her if I... I, I've got to go. The old woman practically dragged me to the bridge. You no go now, she shrugged. The animals already here. They not know whether you good or bad. They maybe hurt you. 
Men come too. Only place to hide is in cabin. Come, quick, now. As, she's, as we started across the bridge, she cautioned, walk only on the right board. Reluctantly, I followed her across the board on the right side. Once we were on the island, we picked up the metal bucket I'd seen her feeding the turtles from that first time I had spied on her. She knelt at the edge of the bank and pounded the side of the bucket with a stick. Little heads began to pop up all across the surface of the black lagoon. She tossed some food to them, but not very much. Then she turned and led me by the hand. At the door of her shack, she stopped. She picked up another bucket and, as I waited, took it to the far side of the lime thicket. She dumped something on the ground and tossed the bucket aside. Dare be bottle of lighter fluid on shelf inside door, she called. You get it for me, please? Cautiously, I opened the door of the shack and stepped in. It was bigger than I had expected. At least it seemed bigger than it had from outside. There was a little wooden bed near an open hearth fireplace. At the head of the bed was a black chest or trunk. It had leather straps on it and brass handles. A wooden table and one chair were the only other pieces of furniture. Shelves lined the walls. They were filled with bottles of medicine and bandages and cotton balls and all sorts of stuff for her animals. Two narrow shelves stood on either side of the fireplace. Those were filled with old books, some with leather backs, others so thick that it would take two hands to even pick them up. Frowning, I looked around on the shelf near the door. Sure enough, there was a bottle of charcoal lighter. I snatched it up and went outside. The old woman pointed at the little pile of wood she had mounded up under the huge black kettle. I squirted plenty of lighter fluid on the sticks, then snapped the tap, top down and followed her into the shack. I put the bottle on the shelf where I'd found it, then turned to watch her. She got a match and went to light the fire. Once it was going, she scurried back inside. Almost trotting, she walked across the room to the big black chest with the brass handles. She dug around a moment and pulled out a long black dress. Not much time, she said. Turn head, please. I turned to face the fireplace. Behind me, I could hear her clothes rustling. She grunted a time or two like she was struggling with something. Okay, now, I heard behind me. When I turned, she had pulled on a long black dress and was standing with a smile on her face in the center of the room. She put her tattered brown dress in the trunk and pulled out a brush. Holding one strand of hair up at a time, she started brushing her hair, fluffing it up. I'd seen Mama do that before. She called it teasing her hair. It made my mother look like she had more hair than she really did. After she smoothed it down, Mama's hair always looked full and fluffy. I shook my head. I couldn't believe it. Bubba Larkin and that whole bunch of men are coming, and you, you're brushing your hair. Why, what? I stammered. The old woman just smiled. They've got torches, I warned her. They're going to try and burn your cabin. Nodding, she just kept brushing her hair and smiling. To animals, not let them get close enough, she said. If they throw fire, she pointed up at the roof with her hairbrush. Crows not fly good at night. They throw fire, crows yell and scream and jump around and flap wings. Day not fly away. Make fire go away. But, but, I strutted again. I stuttered again. Changing your clothes, doing your hair, what? She gave a little laugh. We see how they feel when find old woman not alone. We see how they feel when they find bear and hungry turtles. Chapter 24. It was dark in the cabin by the time the men topped the ridge above Blackwater Swamp. In the distance, I could hear their flashlights and lanterns. I could hear their snarling voices. The old woman had told me to stay under the bed. She had promised I would be safe. I stayed there for only a moment. Then crawling on my hands and knees, I crept over to the wall. I leaned my forehead against the wood and peeked through a crack between the weathered boards. I could see the lights moving down the path. They looked like a glistening waterfall trickling down a cliff. 
I couldn't see the old woman, so I scooted to a different spot. I moved into a corner of the room by the door. Wiggling around, I settled into the corner and found more cracks in the boards. If I leaned my head to the right, I could see the men and the bridge. If I moved to the left, I could see the old woman. She stood beside the huge black kettle. The glow from the fire beneath it cast ghostly shadows on her wrinkly face. When she had finished feathering or teasing her hair, she didn't smooth it down like Mama always did. Instead, she left it sticking out in all directions. Her white hair spun about her head like some giant spider's web. The black dress she wore almost touched the ground. There was nothing in the black kettle, but the old woman held a long pole about the size of a boat oar. She moved it round and round as if stirring something in the empty pot. The wild hair, the black dress, the big kettle, the flickering firelight, with no wind to push the hot Louisiana air, it hung like a heavy blanket. Despite the heat, I felt an iciness that made me shake clear down to my toes. Right before my eyes, the old woman who loved and cared for animals and who had never hurt a soul became the witch of Blackwater Swamp. There she is, a voice called. I leaned to the right, looking out at looking out the other crack between the boards. The string of men who trailed down the path had stopped at the driftwood pile. Lights flickered and reflected across the smooth surface of the black lagoon. I see her, another voice answered. The lights seemed to clump together as the men looked at her. Their angry mutterings fell to a silence. The old woman screamed. It was a high, shrill, frightening sound. I looked quickly through the other crack. Like some lonely coyote, she leaned her head back and howled at the night sky. The sound seemed to roll across the swamp. It raced up the hill. The haunting noise swept through the forest beyond the ridge. And when it finally drifted away on the still night air, an owl called, then another and another. For a moment, there was nothing but a frightening, empty silence. We're going to run you clean out of the country. I recognized Bubba Larkin's voice. I leaned to the right so I could see. You're going to pay for what you done to my cousin Jimmy. You're going to pay for all them things you done stole. And we're going to fix it so you never do nothing like that no more. I pushed my face into the corner so hard that I felt like I was going to get splinters in my nose. It was the only way I could see out both cracks in the, uh, in the boards at once. Come to my island, the old woman taunted. Her voice was like the cackling of an old witch. Come to me. We're going to get you, Bubba threatened. Come, she beckoned with a wrinkled hand. Come. The men were silent. Once they were quiet again, she began to stir the empty kettle. She began to chant jumbling words together that didn't make sense. The words were from some strange language that she repeated over and over again. Lights began searching the far bank of the lagoon. There, someone said, there's the bridge. In line, the lights moved toward the two boards that crossed the black water. The old woman chanted louder. At the bridge, the lights stopped. As my eye caught the old woman, I saw her drop an object that looked like a doll. Suddenly, there was a loud bang. I closed my right eye and looked out my left. The little fire beneath the big black kettle flickered softly. From inside the kettle, a white ball of light and smoke puffed up. When the smoke cleared, I saw the old woman. She held up another doll made of straw and cloth. Chanting again, she waved it above the kettle, then dropped it in. The spell is cast, she shrieked at the men. You will feel the water. It, w it be cold at first, then burn like the fire. Again, a white ball of light exploded from inside the black pot. The white smoke covered the old woman like a fog. She held up a third doll and waved it above the pot. I summon thee to my island. The water awaits you. Cold water that burns hot as fire. I summon the water. I summon the animals. The animals whose teeth are sharp, whose belly are empty. She held the straw doll high in the air. Three come, none leave. 
With that, she dropped the third doll into the black kettle. This one didn't explode in a puff of white light. Instead, a shrill, high-peached, squealing sound came to the still night. It was like someone had taken a balloon full of air and stretched the opening tight. The high, shrill sound stung my ears. Butch, you and Charlie, go get the old hag, Bubba's voice barked. If she thinks she's a witch, we'll just dunk her in this here pond a few times. He laughed. That's what they used to do back in the olden days. We'll just see how long the old witch can hold her breath. Two flashlights shined on the wooden planks. One of the boards creaked. Then the men stopped. How come you don't go get her yourself, Bubba? There was no answer. In the dim glow from the lanterns on the far bank, I could see Bubba. He walked back to where the last two men stood in line. He got the two sticks that I had seen them pouring something on back at the bridge. Another man brought a lantern closer as dug a dug as Bubba dug around in his pocket. He pulled out a cigarette lighter and flicked it a couple of times. When the flame popped out the top, he held it to the cloth. Fire danced its way up the fabric. It swirled around the cloth until the torch was aglow. I'll take care of her shack, Bubba boasted. I'll fire the cabin and you drag her over here. Then we'll all take care of her. We'll teach her not to mess with the good, decent white folk of Lakeview. My teeth ground together inside my head. How could Bubba Larkin talk about the good, decent people of Lakeview? How could he even pretend that he was doing something for somebody else? Of all the sneaking, thieving, dirty, rotten... Well... Bubba snarled as he brought the torch and stood behind his two friends. What you two waiting on? Cautiously, the two men stepped onto the boards. The others urged them on. Bubba moved up behind them. His torch burned brighter. In the glow, I could barely see. The bridge was hidden behind the lime thicket. Then I saw something else. A couple of black lumps on the edge of the bushes. I squinted into the flickering shadows. The bears. I could hardly make out the two bears that the old lady had pointed to on the path when she told me it was too late to leave. They sat hunkered down, hunkered behind the lime thicket, calmly munching the food she had dumped from the second bucket. They were so busy eating they didn't seem to notice the commotion on the other bank. The thicket hid them from view, from the view of the men. My eyes darted back to the bridge. I remembered the day I ran across it. I remembered the old woman yelling, Right board, right board! I remembered the cracking sound beneath my feet when the board snapped. I remembered how fast I was running, trying to get away from the bear, and how my speed carried me to the far bank. The two men on the bridge weren't running. One step at a time, they moved across the boards. Their flashlights jiggled nervously in their trembling hands. And just as they were about halfway across the... Crack! A flashlight went spinning through the air. A man yelled. He grabbed for his friend. Then there was a splash as they both tumbled into the black water. They were beyond the bears in the lime thicket, so I couldn't see them. But I heard them splashing around. They coughed and sputtered and slapped the water as they fought their way back to the surface. Dang, that's cold, one of them coughed. Grab hold of the other board. Let's get out of here. He never finished what he was going to say. A loud, agonized scream cut him short. Ouch! His friend squealed. What in the... Ah! Somebody... Something's got me! The other man screamed. It's killing me! Help! Help me! The men on the far bank scurried about. There were shouts and yells and above it all, screams of pain and agony from the two in the water. Everything moved so fast and furiously in the dim light, I couldn't tell what was happening. At long last, the splashing sounds stopped. Look at his leg, a voice quivered. Look at that. Something took a chunk clean out of his leg. There's another, and there. Look at Charlie, a different voice came. It was so high and scared, it sounded like a little child's voice instead of one of the men's. He got a chunk out of his side, big enough to stick my fist in. Anybody got a handkerchief, a bandana? We've got to stop the bleeding. It hurts. 
I could hear the pain and tears in the voice. It's burning. Somebody help me. Make it stop. Lights and men gathered around the two. Their voices were no longer angry. Instead, hushed, frightened whispers filled the night air like a soft, busy wind. We've got to get him back. They need a doctor. I don't know what's got hold of him, but we've got to go get help. There were mumbles of agreement. Then one angry voice snapped above the others. No. The torch came back to the bridge. I could see Bubba. He stepped to the right board. He bounced up and down. When it held, he moved farther out. It's a trick, he barked. The old woman set a trap for us. He bounced. He bounced again, testing the board at the center. It ain't gonna work, you old witch. You ain't scaring me off. Your little trap ain't gonna save you or your smelly old shack. The old woman cackled again. Come, come to my island. I tell you three come, she repeated. How I got my thumb in my mouth, I don't know. I had my face pressed so hard... Into the corner of the shack, trying to see both directions at once, there wasn't even room for my nose, much less my thumb. But as I watched Bubba Larkin carry his torch across the wooden plank, somehow my thumb got in my mouth. I bit down on it, chewed and chomped in a nervous frenzy until I was afraid I was going to gnaw it clean off. Once across the wooden board, Bubba Larkin marched boldly toward the old woman and her shack. Mean as ever, he waved his torch, cursing and calling out threats. Confidently, he marched beside beside the lime thicket and right into the two bears who were busily eating the food the old woman had left for them. The smaller bear growled when he got beside her. The big bear stood up on his hind legs and roared. Even in the dark, I could see Bubba's eyes. They were as wide and white as the headlights on his 57 Chevy. The scream that came from his voice was more like a little squeak. The torch fell to the ground. Bubba spun and ran, smack dab into the middle of the lime thicket. It was strange how the screams and squeals that came from Bubba Larkin reminded me of the third doll the old woman had dropped into the big black kettle. It was a sound like someone pinching the opening of a balloon, making the air squeak and sing as it rushed through the tiny opening. Bubba kept screaming and squalling and struggling against the long, sharp thorns. The harder he fought, the more the long spines dug into him and held him tight. We got to get him, one of his friends ordered. Come on. But the bears. Get me that other torch. They're afraid of fire. I'll hold him back with the torch. You get Bubba. The old woman held up another doll. Who be next? She called out. Who come to the island of the witch. A flashlight broke from the crowd of men and bounced up the hill. Forget you, a voice called. I'm getting out of here. What about Bubba? A second flashlight broke from the group. Forget Bubba too, another whined. This whole thing was his idea. He got himself into this. Let's get him, let him get himself out. I'm going home. An explosion of movement erupted on the far bank. Lights scampered around. The two hurt men pleaded for help. Some of their friends grabbed them and all scurried toward the top of the ridge. Above the running feet and pleas for mercy, I could hear Bubba yelp and whine as thorn after thorn dug into him. And above the sound of his screams, I could hear the old woman's laugh. Only it wasn't really a laugh. It was a cackle. A cackle that only the witch of Blackwater Swamp could make.